this story is going to be uh, pretty darn important to a lot of us, especially especially folks if you have kids, because we're going to talk about uh, Zoom <clears throat> and their major encryption crisis that they have. Because they do, they have they have a little bit of an, an encryption crisis going on. Um, for those of you that might not know what Zoom is, it's a uh, online meeting program uh, where you can like set up a meeting, you can put in passwords to make sure that it's protected and all that sort of stuff. But that's how a lot of people are are communicating right now. A lot of people are working from home. There's a lot of kids at home that that you know require some extra attention. Uh, beyond just from a parent so uh, educators and uh, businesses and so on and so forth have been using zoom as a way to meet with their employees to meet with their uh, with their students and so on and so forth and uh, and and hold classes even right some some people are holding classes via zoom um, which is very cool and uh, what's what's happening one of the one of the problems with it is this thing called zoom bombing um, I had no idea about any of this stuff. I had no idea that that this this was even fucking happening, right? Um, I talked to Ron Placone uh, maybe a week, week and a half ago or something like that. That's when uh, Ron and Graham did their first uh, Zoom show that they're doing, uh, which if you guys haven't seen uh, Ron Placone or, or Graham Elwood, highly recommend checking them out. Very funny cats. Um, uh, Ron has an album called Agnostic Holiday that's available uh, on all of the platforms that you you want to use, um, and uh, I know Graham has some albums as well. I've known Ron for like a decade, um, but um, what was I going to say? Oh, so they do shows via Zoom, and I, I was talking to them, you know, just to be like, hey, wh what do you what do you recommend here? What do you do you have uh, do you have a recommendation? And you know, and then uh, I, I've been thinking about running a show via Zoom, right? Like a stand up comedy esque show via Zoom. I haven't fully figured out exactly what that needs to be because um, I am trying to take it one thing at a time and, and putting my attention, you know, um, and, and trying to focus on, on the, the, the particular task at hand in the moment. Um, so I, I need to, you know, dedicate some time to formatting a show and coming up with a test show and then getting some feedback and then <clears throat> reformatting and then doing the real thing. But somebody pointed out, hey, if you do that, be careful, um, because there there's this thing called Zoom bombing going on in in our society now. Within within fucking what four weeks of of of, of us, you know, using this stuff, we're we're doing Zoom bombing. Which, if you don't know what that is, I had to look it up too. Um, it's basically trolls that end up coming into like public Zoom meetings, and in cases of like the classroom. Um, they just use a bunch of profanity. There's uh, cases where they've doxed the teacher. Um, there's neo-Nazis coming in and displaying swastikas and shit, shit like that. Uh, you know, just awful shit. Um, and these are all public meetings, by the way, right? These are, uh, they just set up the meeting and they put the link out and anybody that has the link can immediately join uh, the meeting itself. The way you get around that is password protected. Uh, don't do any public meetings. And, uh, you know, so it is it is a little bit extra work that needs to be done. But it's a little bit extra work that I think goes uh, a long way. So I, I still think that I'm going to probably end up using Zoom um, because it's such a uh, universally used platform right now um, to try to do the comedy show and try to learn that platform a little bit more. Like the pre-recorded videos here, I'm using... OBS, and I still have to learn a shit ton of stuff about OBS in and of itself. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not fully versed on it yet. I've got a couple things down, a couple other things I need to learn. But, you know, it's a focus, focusing on one thing at a time is sort of the thing. So, um, but password protected. So if you're a parent out there, if you're, if, if you're if someone that does public classes, um, if you teach um, singing lessons or if you... Uh, you know, are are getting a meeting together, if you're trying to get a discussion group together, if you're just hanging out with your friends via Zoom, uh, please, please, please password protect that shit. Put a password on it 
and send all of those details uh, you know, to your buddies over email or something along those lines, some other encrypted form, uh, because Zoom is having a, some issues with their, in, with their encryption. <clears throat> but here's the dip. Uh, the FBI has actually deemed Zoom to be a federal crime. Is that crazy? Like, this is a federal crime now. <laughs> uh, they basically say, the FBI has said, password protect your meetings, don't make it public. Uh, but if somebody does, ha you know, Zoom bomb you or whatever, report that shit. Report that shit. And I totally get it. I totally get it. Right? 100%. I 100% get it. Um, but I kind of feel like uh, reporting the stuff to the FBI might not be the best idea. And I'll tell you why. Um, Zoom does not have end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, what they have is the same level of encryption that you see on a website uh, to protect it. So when you go on any website, what it, what data and information that it collects is your IP address, so they know where you know you're you're coming from, where 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 the traffic is coming from, um, as well as you know what operating system you're using, and so so that way if there's like let's say you're using a Mac and you're using Opera. Um, and you go to the intercept and the intercept website's not working and you report a problem, they can say, oh, it's a, it seems like Opera is not linking with this code and they can adjust it and fix it and so on and so forth, right? But um, what they said was they had end-to-end -end encryption. That means that both ends of the meeting themselves are encrypted um, and protected. Uh, and that's not the case because, because it's... They're, they're just not. The, they get an access key is essentially what you get. You get one encryption key for both ends and you share that encryption key. That's that's sort of the way that it works. But they said they had end-to-end -end encryption. And the reason why you want to have end-to-end -end encryption is particularly because um, with end-to-end, -end, Zoom can't grab any of the data that you transfer within a Zoom meeting itself, right? So let's say you're passing files from from one to another on a Zoom meeting so everybody can kind of see what this file is all about. Well, without this end-to-end -end encryption, Zoom has that file now. They have that file. So even teachers, like let's say the teachers are passing a file to a child or something like that. Like that, now, now it's in that, like Zoom has access to that. Um, so it's just, it's not, it's not as safe. It's, and you know, and, and it's one of those things that's like, it's a matter of privacy, really. You know, it's a matter of data collection. Um, sure, you can collect the data for, you know, the IP address and your make and model and what's, what internet thing you're, whatever. That's fine. That's, I think, kind of standard. But the rest of it, you know, that's whenever it starts getting, really invasive of your own privacy and that's where this FBI stuff comes into play and it makes it a little bit more tricky because now the FBI if they have to investigate this zoom bombing stuff basically break that privacy and they get to look into all of your zoom meetings they get to look into who was there and the connected zoom. You, you, you see what I'm saying like it, it becomes this domino effect um, so if they don't have end-to-end -end encryption how does Zoom actually work, right? Why is this sort of um, an issue of privacy? So here, here's what they've said. This is from The Intercept. Uh, this is what they said uh, is the way that Zoom works. When you start a Zoom meeting, the Zoom software running your device fetches a key in which to encrypt audio and video. This key comes from the Zoom's cloud infrastructure, which contains servers uh, around the world. Specifically, it comes from a type of server known as a key management system, which generates encryption keys and distributes them to meeting participants. Each user gets the same shared key as they join a meeting. It's transmitted to Zoom software on their devices from the key management system 
using yet another encryption system called the TLS, the same technology that's used on the HTTPS protocol that protects websites. Uh, depending on how this meeting is set up, some, Zooms, some servers in Zoom's cloud, uh, cl Zoom's cloud called connectors may also get a copy of this key. For example, if someone uh, calls in on the phone, they're actually getting a Zoom telephony connector server, which gets sent a copy of the key. This doesn't sound particularly protected, right? Um, everybody kind of has the same shared key. So if you have this encryption key, you can get into these meetings. Um, the end to end would, would make it a little bit more difficult to do that. So, I mean, think about it. If the FBI gets that, how many Zoom meetings can they just spy on? How many Zoom meetings can they just, you know, if they have the back end, because this thing isn't isn't end-to-end -end encrypted, isn't encrypted tighter than what it is, tighter than just a regular website. If you're having a Zoom meeting, do you really want the FBI to spy on you? Do you really want the NSA to do that? That's crazy. And the corporation shouldn't do that. And they shouldn't have lied about it to begin with. That's what they did. They lied about this. So, you know, um, right now, use a password to protect it. Zoom has come out to make a statement saying that they're going to uh, they're going to like change their infrastructure. And I think there's, they're, they're going to release stuff publicly in like three months. Seems like a long time. We might not even be using zoom at that point. We might be, uh, doing something, uh, uh called meeting in the real world. We might be back to, you know, being present with each other in the real world in three months. Uh, so, you know, I uh, I think that they need to release their the way that their shit works, uh, and and be more public with with their encryption uh, methodology. And, and there has to be some kind of accountability for their encryption methodologies as well. Like they can't just say we have end to end, uh, and there's no yeah. Why wasn't there anybody fucking checking in on this? Um, seems seems a little irresponsible in my opinion. <clears throat> I'm not particularly a fan of that. Uh, but for now, like I said, I'm, I'm planning on doing this comedy show, um, trying to figure out and work out these details, trying to, trying to learn this new software. Um, I probably will do Zoom, but I am also looking into some alternatives. So if there are some, some folks that know about some alternatives, um, that uh, use alternatives, if you guys do online meetings and you're like, hey, you know, the Zoom thing had a, uh, these XYZ bugs and glitches that I wasn't really able to work around and didn't particularly care for, um, then, you know, leave a comment, leave a link or something, you know, uh, because I think people are, people are looking for these alternatives. People, you know, we, we shouldn't just m go into... A, the monopoly that all of these meetings need to be happening just through one platform, right? We should be looking at other platforms that might be better, that might be more ethical, that might be more secure than Zoom, um, and and not just give everything into into this one thing. Uh, so, but for the meantime, if you are using Zoom, if you are a teacher, or if you are somebody that that de you know depends on Zoom to to do your meetings and things of that sort. Uh, please, 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 password protect. Use those passwords and don't make the password password, okay? E even if you say PA55, it's not good. That's not great. People will figure that shit out, all right? Use use something different, something from your life, you know, like uh, d cheese grater ball sack 28. Don't use that. That one's gone now. That one's gone now. But you be creative with it. Be creative with it. <clears throat> all right. You might not want to use Seas Greater Ball Sack 25 if you are, like, don't, or of, of the like, if you're, like, a teacher, uh, don't do that. That's a, that's a bad, that's a bad protocol. Uh, that's, uh, I'm, I'm not saying if you're a teacher you should use any sort of, that's just as bad as Zoom bombing. All right, we're moving on. <laughs> Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a like and a subscribe and a share. Share it out with your friends, your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy content like this. I'm going to be putting out videos like this every single day. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel uh, and make sure you hit that bell so you get all the alerts from all the videos that I put out there. 
uh, and uh, and if you if you have the means to uh, please consider making a, a donation. I know we are all in tough times, but if you if you can, uh, you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can check out various different ways of becoming a sustaining member or just make a one-time donation. Uh, while you're on my website, you can also check out all of my past comedy albums, which are available on all of your favorite streaming and um, downloading websites, if that's, that's, if that's a way that you can you say that. Uh, <laughs> but they're also available on Bandcamp, which uh, right now is giving the most back to artists. Uh, but also on my Bandcamp, they are all available for a pay what you want. If you would like to enjoy some live stand-up comedy albums from me and you don't have the means, if you're in tough times, that's totally fine. You can download it for free. Go ahead and get it for free and enjoy it. Uh, or if you do and if you want somebody else to enjoy it, you can get it to them as a gift. Uh, that's also a, a recommended thing. Uh, but most importantly, thank you guys for tuning into this video. Um, thank you guys for, for all the people that have already donated, that have already become patrons. I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. And uh, until the next video, we'll see you on the road. Thank you, guys.